kings, queens, and in-betweens, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Caitlin, and I started a series called BS In With Me, which is basically become a nurse with me, but BS In With Me. So if you watched my pre-nursing school journey video, then you know getting into nursing school was not at all easy for me. I was getting C's, D's, failing classes, withdrawing classes, missing exams and everything, partying every weekend. So if you're going down that same path, or if you're not making straight A's, making A's and B's, don't feel discouraged. Now before I start, I do want to say that I have been getting quite a few DMs from people who attend my university, which is super exciting. So I do want to say this is going to be mostly beneficial to my future pirate nurses out there, because this is my ranking formula from my school that I'm following to get into nursing program. And I also want to say one thing, like, I would always think I'm a semester late, I'm behind on nursing school, I would look at other people and be so jealous of them for already being into the program. But nursing school is not a race. There is no time stamp on when you need to graduate. You graduate whenever you need to graduate. You take however long you need to to get into the program and get out. Not everybody can do it in four years and that's fine. You just graduate whenever you need to graduate. So the ranking formula for my school is passing the HESI points, and then GPA. So the number one thing that you need to do is pass the HESI. That is the most important thing. If you don't have the HESI, if, if you have to tease, pass that too. ECU doesn't care if you have a 75 or a 100 on your HESI. All that matters is that you pass the HESI. I uploaded a video a while ago for how I passed the HESI. I went to like, I went from I believe like a 72 to a 98. And in the video, I told you like how I studied, what materials I use. I even linked down below in the description box so many resources for you to use. And if you don't use my video, there's plenty of other resources out there. There's other videos out there. There are websites for the HESI. There's books, there's Quizlets. There's plenty of resources out there. Make sure you utilize every single resource you find. And if you don't pass the HESI the first time, that's fine. Don't be discouraged. You can try again. I don't know what he's doing. But yeah, if you don't pass the the first time, that's fine. Don't be discouraged. You have another attempt. Now you know what you need to study, how you need to study, what topics are on the HESI, how the questions are structured. Now you know what you need to do to do better next time. And I know some schools like require you to have a resume to apply. So if you need to fluff up your resume, there's a website called Coursera, which is like different universities offering certifications. Which is basically different universities offering free certifications. I know they have like a COVID tracing certification. You can put that on your resume. There's plenty of other certification courses on their different topics and everything. And if your school wants to see that you're active in the community, you can do volunteer work. Your school might have opportunities for you or you can go to food drives, homeless shelters, churches, different things. Or you can join organizations, join clubs on campus. My school doesn't look for that, but I know some schools out there do. The second thing that matters is your points, but we're gonna get into that after we talk about your GPA because your points can come from your GPA. So you wanna get them good grades. I know, I'm not saying straight A's and B's, but you wanna get some good grades in there because the higher your GPA is, the more points you get. Try your best in all your courses, go to tutoring, utilize every resource you have for your classes. For instance, I was struggling in my math class because my teacher, my teacher didn't really teach us. He would just like read a PowerPoint for the first time while teaching it to us. So he didn't even know what he was reading. So I would have to go home. I would have to Google different statistics, equations, or different methods. I would have to look at other people explaining things on YouTube. So don't be afraid to look at how other people explain how to do something for class or different steps and methods or memorization techniques for all your classes. You also want to register for classes as soon as they open because all the good classes will be gone if you keep waiting. Make sure that you use a professor whenever you're signing up for your classes so that you don't get stuck with someone who it's not that great at teaching the material because I took psychology at one teacher and got a D, took it with another teacher and got an A. And I didn't look at her reviews and her reviews were not so well, whereas his reviews were like a 4.9, I believe. So I was able to take a lot of electives. That's how I managed to get a high GPA. I have a list of GPA booster classes. These are from ECU. I don't know how other schools are with their electives or like what electives are considered easy A's for them. And also I'm pretty sure you can email your advisor and they will provide you with a list of electives. But these are the electives that I took at my school and these are the ones that I managed to get A in because they're easy A's. Art appreciation, intro to dance, personal finance, anthropology. 
I've heard about Anthropology 1000, but I personally took Global Understanding, Marriage and Relations, Medical Terminology. There is both HEMA and ATEP, but I took HEMA. Sexual Health, there's two different psychology classes that I took. One of them is Personal and Industrial Psychology, and there's also Careers in Psychology. Alcohol, Tobacco, and Drug Education, Stress Management, Public Speaking, Intro to Theater, Greek and Latin, and Sign Language. These are the ones that are considered easy A's at East Carolina, but like I said, all schools are different. And you also want to look for classes that you can substitute. For example, for organic chemistry, I was not doing so well. I was getting like 30s and 50s on my exams and my professor and I just could not get along at all. So I managed to switch organic chem, which is 1130 at ECU, for general chem, which is 1150. I got a B plus and also that comes to the lab. So I managed to get a B in lab. But for your GPA, we want to try to at least reach for a 3.5. And I'm not, I'm not saying you have to get a 3.5 to get in. So if you don't have that, that's okay. But I'm just giving you somewhere to reach. The past four semesters, as of fall 2020, the lowest GPAs admitted were a 3.08, 3.25, 3.42, and 3.18. So I'm not telling you you have to have 3.5. I'm just giving you somewhere, you know, to shoot for. So now let's get into points. And this is the number one thing other than the HESI, so I guess number two thing to go for. So your points mostly come from your GPA. I'm telling you three- Teddy's been interrupting this video this whole entire time. Um, I forgot what I'm saying. So I'm telling you 3.5 because that will give you around seven points starting out. And we want to try to aim for 12 points. Again, I'm not telling you this is what you have to have. I'm just giving you somewhere to shoot for. So your points mostly come from your GPA. And you also can get three bonus points for passing anatomy one, anatomy two, and your micro and lab for all of those with a B or higher. And that's why I managed to do, that's how I managed to get 14 points whenever I applied. Do not procrastinate on anatomy. Go home, study. If you ask anybody, they're going to tell you label erase, label erase. That's how you pass your practicals. For micro, I took the PowerPoints. I would basically do fill in the blank questions for every single sentence that had something that was important. And I still have those study guides, so if you want my study guides for micro, please let me know and I'll send it to you. So we wanna to try to get those three bonus points and you also get bonus points for not retaking math, anatomy, chemistry, micro. That's two bonus points. And unfortunately I had lost one point because I already took chemistry, that's okay. If you lose your repeats, that's fine. But if you feel like you're about to fail in your anatomy, chemistry, any of those classes, please do not be afraid to withdraw. Withdrawing is okay. It does not look bad on your transcript. It doesn't look bad when you apply to nursing school. Withdraw before you lose all your repeats because you want those bonus points. You want as many points as you can get. We're going to try to aim for at least 12 points. Try to at least aim for a 3.5. But if you don't have that, that's fine. Still apply. It, I'm just giving you something to shoot for. That is basically what I did to get into school at East Carolina University. And I'm just giving you tips. I'm not telling you this is what you have to have whenever you apply. But it's just something to aim for. I hope that this video was helpful to you. Even if you don't go to ECU or you're not planning to be a pirate nurse. I hope it was helpful. Please don't be afraid to message me or comment down below if you have any questions. And I'll try my best to answer them. I hope you enjoyed this video. And let's get this degree.